just look at the function, okay? You can keep dreaming that you're doing something, but you're not. You're consuming so you can reproduce, and you're doing it in an environment of psychology, okay? Ego. These things of, of, of addiction and cannibalism, where you're basically exploitness. You exploit the environment. You exploit the other animals to create an environment you can exist in. See the real price tag for everything you live in and on. How many animals had to, in some way or another, be consumed so you could have what you have. It's a mechanism that was built by crude forces. There's no temperament here. There's no controlling of how out of control it can get. And for you to impose that, to do it willfully and deliberately, yeah, in my opinion, is illogical. The life itself sucks. That life itself is not something that's benign and neutral. It's silly to say it's benign and neutral when you see in the world how unbenign it is. Elephant man disease, or, you know, as the grotesquest of the examples, but the brain tumors, the cancers, the horrible circumstantial deaths, the slow, miserable deaths being crushed in a coal mine, all this shit that goes on here every fucking goddamn day. And do you say, oh, it's all benign because somehow I think my little adventures and my little joy moments somehow make up for all that crap? I don't think it makes up for any of it. I wouldn't impose if the real price tag was to have my joyful life. A six-year-old kid's got to have chemotherapy for three years. There's no part of my joyful life that I think is worthy of a kid having cancer for three years. Not one single fucking, no way I can contrive that equation in my head that I have some valuable experience, like my first moment having sex, or the first this, or the first that, or whatever virginal experience that you think are so magical and precious. I wouldn't say, let's duplicate that by torturing a fucking kid for three years. But that's the real practical fact when you have a kid, that's what you're guaranteeing to exist in the world, you stupid fucks. So in my opinion, yeah, you're not only stupid, you're sadistically stupid. But pain, uh, suffering, suffering sucks, right? So they're not looking at what comes out of suffering. As a matter of fact, this is probably why. I mean, what comes out of suffering? Again, this whole thing, you know, character is a great thing, okay? So this, yeah, a little bit of suffering is a wake-up call. It can make you more empathetic, more, more of a human being. But by the same token, we know that too much suffering just destroys everything that you are, everything that you could be. It takes away your faculties. Migraine headaches don't make people brilliant thinkers. So this is just bullshit, these fucking goddamn cliches. So not only are you perverting language, perverting definitions, perverting the whole function of language, you're sitting there justifying living on cliches. Nietzsche, why Gary's so against Nietzsche is because he said anything that can't kill you only makes you stronger when, uh... It's not can't kill you, it doesn't kill you, okay? So you didn't even say it right. But again, it's just a cliché, it doesn't have any depth. You scratch at it just a little bit, you can knock the veneer off of that. And of course, yes, there is something valuable in, in having to fight for it, having to practice, having to earn your gold medal. Yes, there's some kind of integrity to that kind of triumph over the adversity and all that kind of crap, but that's all just stoic, psycho, babble bullshit. That's the ego again. That's the ambition, the ego, the driver, the desire. This is the contrivance of your brain. It isn't a value in the world, just as the Martian doesn't need to enter the Olympics and win the high jumping contest. The non-existent Martians don't need to do that. He would be, you know, Nietzsche's bringing up the character of an individual after going through suffering and, and how that character has developed, how it's gone through that suffering, and how now it's got a, a greater depth of character than it would have had before had it not. Or else it's disabled by fear now, or, you know, it's crippled by the suffering. So again, this, is, this works both ways. It just isn't, it isn't a truth.
of reality. All right, that suffering is intrinsically good and any of that character building is worth the price you have to pay for it. And how many people go through suffering and don't build any character whatsoever? All they become is petty and angry. They become malicious bastards, things that just start hating on the world and, 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 and making it suffer because they suffered. How many people have endured suffering and then they end up imposing the suffering? They get beat up as a child, but they get abused by their parents and then they beat their wife. How many people have done that? The complete reverse. They become less of a human being through suffering. So the whole idea is that suffering sucks now, right? As opposed to just suffering is. Pain. Yeah, whatever. Suffering is, right? So just take away the substance of it, right? It is intrinsically and fundamentally, every fucking word we have in our vocabulary to describe something negative is associated with a consciousness in some state of negative suffering character. Every single negative word. There's no way to even describe a negative without somehow it implicating a consciousness in some kind of distress. Just pretend that isn't the reality, that it is a bad thing, and just say, oh, it's just suffering, it doesn't mean anything. I mean, fuck you.